Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode we're going to go over tracks in Ableton, how data flows between the Launchpad and Ableton, how instrument devices work and how we can make the Launchpad play some sounds. I just want to go over the comments of the previous video. So the only actual question we got was from Wordier Word 6. Uh, I did everything in the tutorial and when I plug my Launchpad in, no lights turn on the top row, help please. So we're going to go over setting up your launchpad one more time. Uh, so you want your launchpad uh, as the input and the output of your control surface, and you want to make sure these buttons are selected. Uh, if you want to know more about that, you can just check the previous episode where I explain what they do. And one common mistake people do is they accidentally set their control surface to launch key MK2. Your launchpad is not a launch key, so you want to make sure you select the launchpad MK2, and then your buttons are going to work. Now, let's not waste any more time and let's get straight into it. First, I want to explain what this view is. So this is called the session view, and these are clip slots. We're gonna uh, learn more about them later. For now, they are irrelevant to us. Uh, basically, these vertical uh, elements, they're called tracks. Uh, this is the master track. So this is the track that all audio has to go through. And then these tracks can either process audio or MIDI. So these two tracks that we get when you create a new live set, uh, they process audio. So what you can do on, with them, uh, you would uh, place audio on these clips here. And then here you can place audio effects. I'm going to go over those later as well. These are MIDI tracks. You're going to use this for lights. We're not going to use audio tracks for audio and sampling uh, because this kind of audio track takes audio as input and outputs audio. We want to take MIDI as input and uh, we want to output audio. So that's going to be called an instrument track. Uh, by the way, so I mentioned MIDI. What's MIDI? So here's a brief overview over how the Launchpad and Ableton communicate. All music devices that connect with other music devices or computers, of course, electronic music devices, uh, they use a standard called MIDI for communicating with each other. MIDI works over messages. So you have one message and it contains three uh, values. The first value is the type of message. This can be a note on. So when we press a button, we've sent a message that has a type of note on because we've pressed the button. When we release it, we send a note off message. There are other kinds of messages as well, but for now, uh, we'll keep them uh, irrelevant. They will be uh, relevant to us later. The second value it sends is the index or the pitch of the note. So that, that corresponds to which note we press. So we're gonna get a different pitch whether we press this note or whether we press this note. And the third value is the velocity. So this doesn't really come into play on the Launchpad MK2, but it does on a Pro. That that basically means how hard you push the the note. So if you were if you were to have a Pro, if you push the button really hard, you would have a really high velocity value. If you just push it like this lightly, you would have a really low velocity value. Uh, when we're talking about light effects, uh, this velocity value uh, will carry the color value. So if we send a high velocity, we'll get uh, one color, if we send a low velocity, we're gonna get a different color. So that, that's all you really need to know about MIDI in general for now. So let's see how we can capture uh, some MIDI input from here. Make sure that you turn these on like this. You don't need to see the sends and returns. The return tracks are just like effect tracks. You can remove them if you want. They're, they're pretty much useless for us right now. You basically want the mixer section and the input output section visible. By the way, if you ever wonder what something does, you can just hover over it and then look at this here in Fill View. Uh, it's really useful when you're starting out. We want to capture MIDI input from our Launchpad MK2, so we do that. Make sure to enable the button on the bottom. It's the arm button and the track will only listen to incoming notes when it's enabled. So, how do we make an instrument track? That's what we want to learn today. We only want to learn about instruments. First, let's find some kind of instrument. Let's see, let's find a piano. All results. There we go. So now we have a lot of samples. So these are audio files. They're not very useful. Uh, but there are also some instruments. They look like this. So let's load this one up. There we go. It has some parameters. And we can play it on the launchpad. So this here bottom uh, part, this here shows the contents of the selected track. So if I select this track, there's nothing on it. This track has the grand piano loaded. This bottom part is where you will build your chain. You'll build your chain of MIDI effects, instruments, and audio effects. So if I were to place an audio effect after, after this, say a filter, this is called an audio effect and you can make it do stuff. Weird stuff. 
or you can pass some MIDI effects before. So you first you process the MIDI signal, then you create a sound via an instrument, and then you can process that audio with an audio effect. That's the general uh, hierarchy. The note sequence goes like... Goes like that. We can also look at a MIDI effect track. Uh, you can make it show the keys. This is like usually used for filtering. And I'm gonna go over that later, but for now we can use it to see which key we're pressing. So, for example, if we wanted to play something on the launch pad... So you can see which uh, which keys you're actually pressing. Let's talk about samples. So, what's a drum rack and what's an instrument rack? Let's go over that. So, a drum rack is an instrument. It takes MIDI as input and it outputs audio. Basically, what it allows you to do, it allows you to place any sample on any key. And the keys are visually uh, displayed like they're arranged on the launch pad. Press these here, you can see they match what I'm pressing on the launch pad. And then these go higher up. So it's, a, it's very easy to visualize where your samples are. So let's go find some samples. Let's find a pick. And there we go. We can place it on any sample. We can, we can place it on any key we want just by dragging it around. Now we can add more samples, let's say, hey, let's find the snare. Well, let's take that one, doesn't matter really, let's put it here. There we go. So, that's the most basic way of mapping samples to the launch pad. You're gonna use this a lot. This is like the main part of your project file. All right, now let's go over the instrument rack. So what the instrument rack is, it's basically like a device that you would use for grouping. So you use a drum rack for assigning stuff to buttons and you use an instrument rack to assign stuff to like a range of buttons. That's like what you usually do with them, even though they can pretty much serve the same functionality. So let's let's get that grand piano we were playing around with earlier, and then we're gonna expand it by the key. So this is kind of like what we were looking at uh, when we were using a MIDI effect track, which groups MIDI effects for light effects uh, to visualize which keys we're pressing. You can use this as well. So now what we can do with that, we can tell the launchpad only to uh, utilize the grand piano on this range of notes. So that's what you use it for. You use it for filtering stuff. So let's say this is C3. Now any note below C3 doesn't trigger grand piano anymore because it's outside of its zone. These notes all trigger because they're inside of the zone. We can take something like a bass. Okay, let's take this. This is like a sub bass, but it doesn't really matter. And let's say I want that on the bottom part. So now I can play two instruments at the same time. I can have a bass here, and I can have a piano on the right side. And you can do this however many times you want and make a complex setup. All right, so those are the basics of working with tracks and working with data in Ableton. Uh, and instrument devices. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll answer them in the next video and also answer them immediately. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you for watching.